The topic under discussion is going to be the antiviral pharmacology. In this lecture, we will talk about the anti-influenza pharmacology and in the next upcoming lectures, we will be talking about the anti-hepatic, anti-herpes, anti-HIV pharmacology. So before we get right into the discussion of the anti-influenza, I would love to tell you the points that are going to help us understand this anti-influenza pharmacology in a very easy way. What are the points? First of all, I will tell you people about the replication or you can say the life cycle of this influenza virus means how this influenza virus will come first of all infect a particular cell then inside that cell that in this influenza virus is going to replicate is going to create its copies then how those copies are going back again outside to go and find another cells and infect those cells also. So in short we can say we will talk about the life cycle. As we get the understanding of the life cycle, after that we will move towards the pharmacological targets. We come to know about the targets where the drugs are going to show their actions. They are going to bind there and show their actions. If we know the life cycle or application, it will be very easy for us then to identify the targets and to know the mechanism of action of those drugs. Coming to the very first point, that is the replication of pathway. This influenza virus is actually an RNA virus. What? RNA virus. What will happen first of all? This virus will find a cell by means of its GP spikes protein. You know, this virus is having a lot of proteins at its outer covering. One of those proteins is GP spikes. Now, these GP spikes are available on the entire surface of this particular virus. By means of this GP spikes, it will identify and find the receptor on a particular cell. After that, they will combine together. After the combination, there will be the endocytosis. This virus will move inside the cell. And as it moves inside, what will happen then? Then there will be the process of the mechanism known as uncoating. Now, how this uncoating happens, in case of influenza virus, it is a bit tricky. How like? Influenza virus is actually an RNA virus, which is having a capsid. Then, after the capsid, there is another layer of protein that is known as matrix protein. Then there is envelope. Okay. Now this is the external surface. Remember, influenza virus is having eight RNA strains. Don't be confused. Okay. What happens is this virus moves inside. The envelope will be removed. It will remain outside. Now what's remaining? Matrix protein, capsid, and RNA. Now this matrix protein is actually responsible to introduce channels. Now it is M2 channels which are responsible to uncode this particular RNA. What will happen then? Very simple. After the uncoating, the RNA will be free. And this RNA will come and will find the ribosomes in the host cells. And you guys know it very well. That ribosomes are responsible to do the translation. And what will happen if the translation is done? Very simple. When the RNA is translated, the proteins are synthesized. And remember, these proteins which are synthesized, these are all those proteins which are needed for this influenza virus. Now, one of these proteins will be the RNA polymerase, which will take part in the synthesis of the influenza virus RNA. Okay. Means, at the end, what will happen? Proteins will be synthesized. One of those proteins will synthesize genetic material. After these are synthesized, there will be the assembly of these all proteins and RNAs. Now, these RNA and proteins will assemble. After the assembly, there will be the packaging. In each virus, the number of proteins and RNA, they will be packed in a sequence, okay? Copies will be synthesized. Then each copy will move out. Now, here is a tricky point remaining. As this copy is moving out, there will be a kind of attachment. This is actually the host cell membrane and here is the attachment point with the virus. Now what happens here, very interesting, that I told you people in the beginning that there are several spikes protein, GP spikes proteins available. Now other than this GP spikes, there are some neuraminidase proteins also available. Now those neuraminidase which are available here on the viral envelope, they will help in cleaving this attachment point between the virus and the host cell membrane. What will happen then? By means of this neuraminidase proteins, then this virus will become free. 
as it becomes free then it is able to go and find another cell and in fact that cell like this a particular virus is entering and replicating inside the cell and making its copies and these copies are then releasing one by one and going and infecting other cells so this is the life cycle now let's come towards the targets the pharmacological targets in the pharmacology we have two approved classes for two targets number one class is neuroimmunodes inhibitors number two class is m2 inhibitors now what m2 inhibitors will do m2 inhibitors are actually inhibiting or closing the m2 channels if here the m2 channels are closed then uncoating will not be happening then this rna will remain in the matrix protein so if the rna is not moving out then there won't be synthesis of the protein you can say that the entire path is then blocked then we have neuroimmunodes inhibitors neuroimmunodes inhibitors we got the concept that neuroimmunodes is responsible and it is helping to release the newly synthesized copy of the virus from this membrane of the host cell means it is helping in the release so if we inhibit this neuroimmunodes then what will happen then these viruses these new, new copies they will remain attached with the host membrane so like this we blocked its replication pathway no further replication and if there are some synthesized they won't be released by because of what because we inhibited neuroimmunodes neuroimmunodes which was responsible to free this virus from the host cell membrane so now let's come towards the pharmacological drugs we have in the, this class in the neuroimmunodes we have zanamavir oseltamavir and primavir and in the m2 inhibitors we have amantadine and remantadine and I, these are responsible to treat the influenza virus I hope you got. If still you have confusion, drop in the comment box.